With the A series of Pixels, Google tries to condense down the main experience of the flagship Pixel into a more affordable and smaller package, without having to compromise on anything important. But the question is, has the company succeeded with the latest Pixel 6a, or should you buy the Pixel 6 instead? I'm Cam Bunton from PocketLint, and in this video, I'm hopefully going to help you decide. And while you're here, if you do like it, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. So first, design. And to say the Pixel 6a looks like the Pixel 6 would be something of an understatement. It essentially is exactly like a Pixel 6, but slightly smaller. Almost everything is the same. That includes the button placement on the sides, the port and speaker design, and the square corners both outside and inside the display's bezel. Of course, there's also that iconic camera bar that runs across the back of the phone. It identifies the product very clearly as part of that Pixel family. But there is a difference here in that it doesn't protrude anywhere near as much as the bar on the Pixel 6. That adds to the feel of this phone being more compact and pocket or palm friendly. It also means it collects less fluff in your pocket. The size difference does generally mean it's a bit easier to use as a general daily one-handed device. I like the way it feels in the palm and certainly doesn't feel as big and bulky as its older sibling. For me, it's the difference between feeling like my grip is a little too stretched and not. There is some material difference too, both still use this lovely matte black aluminium around the sides, but the rear of the 6A is covered in a plastic material which, despite being cheaper, still looks and feels just as good as the more premium glass model. It is worth noting here that the Pixel 6a uses Gorilla Glass 3 on the front, Pixel 6 uses Gorilla Glass Victus, and that makes it more durable and more resistant to scratches. Perhaps the most surprising design spec is the water and dust resistance, because despite this being a mid-range device, just like the Pixel 6, it's highly resistant to water and dust. In this case, it's IP67 versus IP68, which basically means the Pixel 6 can go to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes, where the Pixel 6a can go to 1 meter for 30 minutes. In daily use, then, it doesn't mean that much, and should mean that both are equally adept at surviving accidental splashes, being caught in the rain, or dropped in the sink, or worse. Now onto the display, and we've covered these phones being different sizes, which of course means the screens are different sizes. So of course if you want the bigger display, there's only one choice here. However, in other areas they're very similar. For instance, they're both Full HD plus 2400x1080p resolution, which means the same 20x9 ratio. Both being AMOLED based, you do get a similar approach to contrast, colours and brightness too, but when you look at them side by side, there's a sense that the Pixel 6 does have an ever so slightly higher quality panel. It's a tiny bit more dynamic maybe, but like with so much of this phone, we were hard pushed to see clear significant differences. Colours and saturation are very similar on the two screens, and the calibration tools give you the same options to choose from, allowing you to switch between natural, boosted or adaptive colours. Apart from the size then, the display experience is very similar on both. Of course there is a difference in refresh rates, which we'll go over a little bit more when we're talking about the performance. And since we're there, from a performance and battery perspective, surprise surprise, there's not a huge amount of difference here either. Although arguably, this is still an area you'll notice the most significant differences. Both are of course powered by the same Tensor processor, but you do get more RAM with the Pixel 6, it's 8GB versus 6, and as mentioned, the faster refresh rate display does make some elements feel smoother when switching between different areas of the interface. When you're loading apps using them or playing games though, it's not as easy to spot that difference. So it's mostly a case of having to decide whether you can cope with slightly less crisp animations in the interface where the lower refresh rate shows its face. For those who like numbers, it is 60Hz on the Pixel 6a and up to 90Hz on the Pixel 6. Playing our favourite games was a consistent experience on both, as was the fact that they can both get a little warm under load, especially when you've been playing more demanding games for an extended period. As for battery, again, they're not identical, but with Google's algorithms that learn your usage patterns, they can both get you through a full day without any issue. In fact, we found once we'd got past the first week or so, the battery life improved to the point where we could easily finish a day with nearly 40% left over, on the Pixel 6, and on the Pixel 6a. Both phones needed charging every night then, but neither could get us through two days. What makes the most difference to the experience is the charging speeds and charging abilities. Pixel 6 can charge at 30 watt speeds, with the right charger. That means 50% in 30 minutes of plugging in time. The Pixel 6a maxes out at 18 watts, which is fine, but adds noticeable time to the overall refill process. 
What's more, the Pixel 6 has fast wireless charging up to 21 watts as well, so you get that convenience, where the Pixel 6a has no wireless charging whatsoever. Now, of course, one of the things I was most interested in comparing was the cameras, because I wanted to see how much of the Pixel's camera performance comes from the sensors and lenses, and how much was down to Google's really smart AI processing, and the image signal processor that's built into the Tensor platform. Perhaps unsurprisingly, I found that most of it is due to the latter, because the results from the two phones are remarkable similar, but there are still slight differences if you look close enough. And that's the thing, you do need to look pretty closely to see the differences, or at least I did, because on the whole the two produce shots that are vibrant, colourful, eye-catching with plenty of contrast. Both have strong primary and ultra-wide cameras, and colours are pretty evenly matched across both. Sometimes we had the sense that results from the Pixel 6 were ever so slightly richer in terms of colour and detail, but really it was so difficult to pinpoint. If anything, that's a testament to how good the Pixel 6a's cameras are for a phone that's in this mid-range segment. If there's any consistent difference, it's that the Pixel 6a is slightly overexposed compared to the Pixel 6, making the highlights a bit too prominent and losing some of the colour and the texture. But the area I saw most obvious differences was in the depth of field and background blur. Pixel 6's bokeh effect was stronger and more effective when taking close-up shots. The Pixel 6a didn't seem as good, so if that's important to you and you want that attractive bokeh in the background of your shots, the Pixel 6 is the better choice. I think where I noticed the bigger differences though in processing was when using the night mode feature. Pixels seemed to give a cleaner, sharper image with wider dynamic range and better colours. It wasn't necessarily that the 6a was bad, not at all, but the 6 tended to have a bit more of a crisp look to it, and lines were sharper. And we also noticed the stabilisation was better on the Pixel 6 as well, because I often found with the 6a that with some nighttime shots I would get some handshake and motion blur, which I didn't get with the Pixel 6. As for selfies again, a lot of the time they were evenly balanced, but sometimes the 6 would have a warmer finish to it than the 6a, which would sometimes go for that completely white balanced, sterile approach. So in the end, it's hard not to come out of this time testing both phones side by side with the feeling that the 6a is stunning value for money. It offers an experience remarkably close to the Pixel 6 in every area that really matters. Pixel 6 is the slightly better phone, but it is more expensive, and I think for most people, saving money and buying the 6a is the best choice. Because that extra cash you might have to spend to get the 6 doesn't result in a much better experience, unless you really need faster charging or wireless charging, there's really not much reason for it. Now, if you find it discounted at a similar price, there's no reason not to get it. It's still a very, very good phone. And the cameras are slightly better, so it's still worth it if you find a good deal. But at full price, I feel the 6a is the better option. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on Twitter, you can get hold of me there if you want to, or use the comments down below. Would you like to see us compare the 6a with another phone? Maybe the Galaxy A53? Let us know in the comments. And if you did like this video, please do subscribe and tap that notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.